Welcome, everyone, to the From the Shadows podcast. I'm your host, Shane Grove, and with me, as always, is the real Slim Shady, Jason, the super producer. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> also with us is the barrister. Hey, everyone. Now, um, this is a, this is an interesting episode tonight. We're um, I, I don't know I don't know how to begin this because we're going to talk about a subject we've never I don't even think it's ever been discussed on the show. I don't think it has. We're going to talk about the Wendigo. Absolutely. Now, now, Barrister, I think you mm-hmm. you've done some research on the Wendigo. So, for all of our listeners who who have never heard about this, because if you've been listening to us, you don't know anything about the subject, and unless you listen to other podcasts that talk about it or watch other shows, because, we, like I said, we've never touched on it. But right, but so so give a, give us a little background on what the Wendigo is or well, what we believe. I, I, it I think is. that. I, I think I was early on, I was a bit confused, like a lot of people, as to the difference between a Wendigo and a Skinwalker. Yes. And, and and I think some people, especially Hollywood, will merge the two as if it's the same thing. Not and, Holly, not Hollywood. <laughs> they don't like... Yeah, they don't take artistic liberties huh, with anything. Okay. okay. But, so... We have some stories that we're going to tell a little bit later on, and it's from those stories that, that caused us to do some investigation. And so our research finds is that, you know, First Nation people believe that there is this creature called a Wendigo, and now there is a, a divergence into what it really is. Is it the same creature or not? Called the same, spelled differently. So the Algonquins believed that the Wendigo was a creature that oftentimes would follow storms, would blow in with snowstorms, thunderstorms, adverse weather, and that it was an actual physical creature, large in stature, very gaunt, white, um, large teeth, no lips, that it looked like something that was decaying, that it was emaciated, and that this creature was could eat as much as it wanted, but it could never be satiated. Its its hunger could never actually be, you know, fulfilled. And so, therefore, all it did was creep around in woods and whatever, looking for victims to consume. And, and even if it, you know, whatever it consumed, that wasn't enough. It was always looking for something. And so, there's been you know, there's been sightings, modern sightings of these things. There's some, I think if you go on the internet, you'll look and you'll and see that there are people who have pictures of strange creatures out in the woods that are pale white um, that say, is this the Wendigo? There was something on uh, Paranormal Caught on Tape where yeah. something ran across the road. It said, hey, is, is this the Wendigo? No, no, we do <clears throat> on our Instagram page. On the From the Shadows podcast Instagram page, if you don't follow that, you go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Cheap plug. I beat Jason to mm-hmm. it. But we do a Wendigo Wednesday. So our, our the, the person we work with to, to do, some, uh, do some of our stories and stuff on there, we've picked out a different cryptid for every day of the week. You know, Mothman Monday, mm-hmm. but it's Wendigo Wednesday. And so usually the pictures that we see on that, that either we find somebody does artwork or has done a t-shirt or tattoos. I mean, there's some crazy Wendigo tattoos. It always depicts this creature as having horns. Antlers. Antlers. Yeah, 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 yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. Antlers. And like really like big antlers. And that stems from drawings, from Native American drawings of what they claim they saw. And this kind of goes back with the whole Bigfoot thing in that, you know, First Nation people drew what they saw. They would draw pictures of deer, antelope, bison, fox, squirrel, beaver, real things. And along with those caricatures were what what we describe as Sasquatch Bigfoot, but also things like Wendigo. And so they, you know... It's interesting to try to say where does fact and folklore meet, okay? And, yeah. and it's easy for people to say, well, you know, it's easy for us to identify 
that these things here are fact and Bigfoot and Wendigos are folklore because we've never found a body. Well, simply not finding the body in and of itself, you know, for example, like, well, look, recently it's been in the news about that, that, that fish that it was supposed to be extinct for 50 million years. And Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's still around and it can, they can live to be a hundred years old. Now, if you ask somebody, you know, 10 years ago, they said that, oh, you know, I saw this. Oh, no, no, that's, that's not real. That's folklore. That's myth. That's not, that's not real. But those things really were real. It's the same thing with the giant squid. You know, people, people thought that giant squids were just made up, that they were, they were <clears throat> folklore. Sailors made these stories up, da, 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 da. Well, fast forward, they end up fighting the body of a giant squid. Turns out they were real the whole time. Mm-hmm. So th- the mere fact we haven't found one. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of animals in zoos were, within the last 125 mm-hmm. years or whatever, were thought to be mythological creatures. Oh, well, it <laughs> hasn't been that long ago that they actually discovered mountain gorillas. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. I You're mean, right. it's not that long ago in, in in terms of history, you know that 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 they thought mountain gorillas were were just some myth, made up story, you know. So so yeah, the the antlers, the antlers, and the long spindly arms, the rib cage showing, the lit, you know, no lips, you know, just raw decaying. That is the a common feature uh, for Indian tribes. Northern Michigan, Wisconsin, um, New York, Ohio. That that is a common in our backyard. In, in, in our, our backyard, backyard. Yeah, in our yeah. backyard. And then you start to go a little bit west, and like the Crees and stuff like that. They have a different version of what the Wendigo is. To them, the Wendigo is this malevolent creature, spirit that possesses people. And makes them become cannibalistic. It makes turns them into monsters. Now they don't take a physical metamorphosis, um, you know, a la Lon Chaney, the Wolfman. They 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 get uh, possessed by this demon, by this creature, and then they'll kill people and eat them, consume them. And the most famous case is back with uh, uh, Swift Runner, who I uh, can't remember the name of the the tribe he was a member of, but he had there was a long harsh winter, and he showed up and you know, to a place and says, Hey, you know, my, my family, uh, you know, they starved to death, you know, it was a lean winter and, you know, we, you know, they died and people were very suspicious because he did not look like he had lost any weight. He looked very full. He, he seemed like, Hey, this is a guy who hasn't missed any meals. And so when they went out and they investigated, they found what just could only be described as just an incredibly gruesome scene where he had murdered his family and consumed them. They were bone. He, it was just, just an awful, awful scene. And he, then they, he put, was a crew Indian who murdered his uh, wife and five children and cooked and ate their flesh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They found like the pots with the bones wow. in the pots where he had boiled them and ate them. And, and so, you know, they stood trial. They found, you know, he basically, his defense was that he was possessed by the, the spirit of the Wendigo. Hmm. Um, and, and then there's which, other sources. Which is, so right there is a, is it kind of a, where these two myths kind of butt head, where mm-hmm. the first is the creature is the one that's it's insa- consuming you, consuming yeah. everybody and insatiable. Then this, the neighboring legend, uh, it, the further right. you go west, right. turns into where you're possessed. Right. And the person is actually. Right. The, so, uh, so I guess the, 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 you know, what's scarier? that there is something that's creeping around in the woods that could get you or that someone in your family, a loved one is going to get possessed by this and is going to kill you and eat you. You know, that's the, you know, what, what actually is worse. I think it plays on everybody. I I kind of expect somebody in my family to murder me, cook me and eat me. I mean, you know, so I, (laughs) I just figured that eventually was going to happen. But so, so I think one of the questions that, that, that jumped out at me when he's doing some of those researches, are these really the same creature? Are these really the same in there? You know, the, if you look, they'll spell Wendigo W E N and then other places will be spelled W I N. And to me, from what I've read and, and, and just using, you know, deductive reasoning, I'm not saying that either one of them is a hundred percent real. And I'm not saying that they're, they're not real, but I don't think they're the same thing. 
I think we're talking about two totally different entities. So I think that there is a physical creature that is, you know, creeping around looking to catch you, consume you. And I think there probably is some sort of evil spirit that would possess people. So where does, and I, and we kind of discussed this before we came, where does then the skinwalker lore merge into, right? right. Because skinwalkers out West are out, are further out West, New Mexico, Arizona, right? Utah. And uh, any depiction I've Oklahoma. seen of skinwalkers were they were, um, you know, shaman at first who had right. to had to murder somebody. They're medicine men, yeah. shaman, spiritual and to become leaders a, other, other and to become tribes. a skinwalker, you had to murder somebody in your family. Yep. Okay, but they also then um, one of the legends I've seen is where the warriors that you know they called skinwalker were dressed up as wolves and other animals right. and snuck up into other Indian tribes right. to spy on right. those, on those, on their right. other warriors. And, and you think so about where the, does, where does maybe them dressing up like a deer right. or an elk or well, having the, so, having the head, so you know? think about this way. The, the skinwalker is supposed to be a shapeshifter, yeah. a shaman who has now mastered the ability to shapeshift. Yes. And, and you in in like what Grover's saying is that you know people would dress in animal furs to creep up and spy and things like that. So where does you know where does truth and fiction you know where, where does that where does that meet? So but you think about it, there's there's a lot of um, civilizations that, that believe in shape shifting creatures and. You go back to the Nordics. You know, the Nordic people believed in what's called a night stalker. You know, things like that. That uh, that that you could you could someone could change shape into in something and, and, and creep in and you know. So we, we we got different. I think we're talking about three different things. One is you you know the night stalker was a human being who through whatever became that you know be, be, became this thing. Um, became a skinwalker. The, the the Wendigo First Nations who believe it's a physical creature that is out there looking for people to eat, to consume. And then you have the third entity, which is just a demon possession case. And there was a, um, <clears throat> an interesting thing that, that you think about is, you know, people are so easy to dismiss possessions and demons and things like that. And, and I always say, well, if you don't believe in demons, then, you know, look, look at the dollar bill that you put so much faith in. What does it say on it? In God, we trust. Mm -hmm. You can't believe in God <laughs> and not, not believe, believe in, 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 in the in devil the, in and the, evil and, yeah, and things exactly. like that. It's so the yin and the yang of it. Yeah. True. And so we're, we're What's, so, what does Kaiser, or Kaiser Soze say? The greatest trick that the devil ever pulled on on mankind was convincing them that he wasn't real. There mm -hmm. you go, and, and mm -hmm. th that's very true. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, we, we're so easy on Sunday mornings to file into a church and sit in a pew and believe mm -hmm. that 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 a man by the name of Jesus of Nazareth was a real man that he died and he was risen from the grave and he, he did miracles and and he cast out demons remember he cast demons into pigs it says it right there it the, says in, in the there Bible. so so on Sundays and Wednesday nights it's so easy for us to believe in these things but then when confronted with someone who says hey listen I did this terrible act I think I'm possessed we're so easy to dismiss that as all oh, that's not real, demons aren't real. But yet, I'll walk in on Sunday, and the very Bible that, mm -hmm. that we sing hymns from, and we do all this stuff. You know, Jesus talks about demons and things like that. Remember, the one he talked which, about said he said, "What the, ask the demon's name?" He says, uh, "Call me Legion, for we are men. For we are many." Yeah, which the Native Americans would not have, you know, would not have had access to Christianity. Had, yeah, and mm -hmm. so they, you know, had their own beliefs in. Good spirits and bad spirits. Sure. I, every they, civilization does. Yeah, they had figured every, it every, out. Every civilization believes that there is this good versus evil. And, you know, like Jason just said, a yin for a yang and the balance of the universe, lightness and darkness. And 
And, every, you know, just like every civilization has a creation story. Almost every civilization has a great flood story. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there are certain things that are common to the human experience. But good and evil is something that's very common to, to everyone. And so it, I can't dismiss that there's demons and there's spirits and there's evil things that have existed for thousands and thousands of years. Like, I can't dismiss well, that. Well, it's, yeah, well... It, if you're going to ask me what's the harder one to wrap my head, it's it's harder for me to wrap my head around that there's a gaunt <laughs> creature, seven eight foot creature, seven, eight foot tall, creeping with, around the rim, yeah, as opposed to somebody being possessed by an evil spirit and killing right. their family, right? You know, and whether the evil spirit is just mental illness or right. well, or, that's or, the thing. or whatever. I mean, but it almost seems to me like this is the old uh, game of telephone. Okay, yeah. like it started out one thing on the east, right. in right. the east, and as people mm-hmm. moved west through, you know, like the the right. people, the the Native Americans in New Mexico would have never probably run into the Native Americans, right, of from New Lake, York of, of New or York, the Lake Erie area, yeah. the Great Lakes, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. so you know, one of the things that, and, and I don't profess to be, you know, a First Nations expert, but I do know that. There's this very common, uh, there's this very common expression of Indians. Oh, they were Indians. They were native. They're Native Americans. You're talking about very distinct, different tribes that had never interacted with each other. Right. They had different political hierarchies, different religious hierarchies, different, d- d- just different totally. I mean, socially. I mean, when you look at certain Indian tribes that that, that basically were, you know, were. Um, were basically farmers. They, they basically lived in an agrarian society. And then you go out west and you run into the Comanches, you know what I mean, who were horse people. And they they, they didn't farm anything. They just rode around and they, they, they took what they wanted. And they mm-hmm. So we, we so easily throw around the term Indian and try to lump all their beliefs into one category when you can't do that. You, the, I mean, these were different tribes that may have never – ever had any contact with them with different cultures with yep. different yep. cultures and then, and then it, you had the european influence as the europeans mm-hmm. swept across the great plains and and started and and, and, and keep in mind the europeans brought their own folklore history the, the 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 werewolf you know what i mean you start bringing those things over and at some point do those stories mix you know and like when we which adds them, which adds credence then to the fact that there was something going on because everybody had their own story. Right. It's how did it, you know, was it, a, was it the, the first was it European Europeans influence? coming it, and, yeah. and, and kind of, they're the ones kind of messing everything together. Yeah. Mission, so, mission. Cause we do that. I mean, we, we, and, and, and human, the, the human beings, human, human beings have this, ins, you know, insatiable desire to explain the natural world. And you can go back to the Mayans, you can go back to the South Americans, advanced civilizations are way more advanced than, say, the, the, the Native American tribes in, you know, Lake Erie. And you say, well, they wanted to have an explanation as to why the stars moved, why the sun rose and set. And, and usually they attach religious significance to all this stuff. But when you look at the Wendigo, there's nothing religious about it. You know, the, sh- the, the skinwalker, there's a religious component because it was the shaman, it was the medicine man, it was the healer, the holy man. But when you talk about the Wendigo, and it is just an evil creature that preys upon people. You know what I mean? And so now, is there, is there an origin story to the Wendigo as far as why it... Why it does what it does? Why it does what it does, and when did it, you know... I uh, mean, I think that's pretty. I think there's a lot of different stories out there. So you know, what is the first? You know, I never found anything that says this is the definitive origin story that everybody you know that you know says signs off on. This is the origin story. It's unquestionable. So you know, some of this stuff, um, evil, for example, evil is timeless. You know, e- evil existed before the creation of time. In, in my opinion, 
Um, and so how long have these things been around? Did they, 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 did they predate, um, you know, mankind? Are these things just, or do they die? Can you, can you kill a Wendigo? I mean, there's a way that, I mean, we've, we found, you know, yeah, you can kill a skinwalker, but can you kill a Wendigo? That's a good question. I mean, the fact that we got two different, shall we say, animals we're dealing with here. You got certain uh, uh, cultures that believe the Wendigo is supernatural, and it's not a creature. Right. And there's been depictions of uh, these things. Not only do they have the uh, antlers, but they have more of a analyst, animalistic kind of uh, legs, like they have the knees that uh, are bent back the other way, yep. and uh, more of animal and less humanoid. You and know, interesting what you're describing there is something very similar to what a dog man looks like. Yes, exactly. You know, exactly. But, but the dog man, obviously, you know, you know, with fur and it's not all gone. But well, some of the depictions of the Wendigo, remember, actually have like sort of like a buffalo back. They have that yep, hunch back that, uh, with the, fur on it, even though they're somewhat decayed. Well, and the the lupine face. Yes, the, you know the, the exactly. lupine face, which would be very, you know, dog esque and yeah. stuff like. And if you think about it, where the dog man st- stuff is is around Indian is is mm-hmm. in the well, but that's Native in the American. same geographic locations as <laughs> the yeah. The Algonquin and stuff like that. So it's mm-hmm. it, th- those are very similar, almost type creatures in in terms of size and you know uh, long long. Are you limits. going to go on the record right now and say that to take the dog man to take the heat off itself, the skins pulled, down, pulled <laughs> the Grinch that stole Christmas trick and tied the antlers to the dog's head. To disguise itself as a as a <laughs> Wendigo. <laughs> come on, you remember the little the yes, little dog? Yeah, and yeah, of course come I on, do. Come, come on, on yeah. man. But you know the thing is though, in in there are there are creatures, animals that have skin disorders. That uh, have you ever seen a hairless bear? Does no. not look like a bear at all. I've never. There, seen There's a, a skin bear. condition where a bear loses all of its hair, and it has no hair, it has no fur whatsoever, and it does not look like a bear. It just doesn't. What it is it like looks a hu- like, like a human. Maybe? What does it look, look like? It a big up. sloth or something? Look I have it to look it looks up. it looks crazy. I mean, I, am not so I haven't eaten dinner yet tonight. I'm not looking up a hairless bear. All right. <laughs> so they're not like fat and fluffy. That sounds like a nice no. that, that we were talking about punk rock bands. Hairless bear would be a great punk rock. It would be band. a great name for a punk rock yeah, band. Hairless bear. <laughs> hairless bear. Stay tuned, Imagine ladies and gentlemen. Possibilities for uh, the hairless bear. Oh God, that's you understand. There's other connotations to that hairless bear, <laughs> but we'll just skip right. This over. is a family program. We're, We're talking about right We're cannibalism right and and hedonism and stuff. We're gonna, yeah. right We're gonna skip right over it. Um, so that kind of takes us to. Yeah, so Some what story? So, yeah, so so, let's so about ex- yeah, so let's about a year. We're talking so a year and a half ago, maybe a mm-hmm. uh, friend of mine um, who um, I'll even say lives in Galleon. Lives in Galleon, Ohio. Galleon, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, his, you know, his parents were out of town, and they had a couple dogs, and his brother was supposed to stop by. And check on the dogs, let them out, do their business, put them back. And this is during winter. Winter. There's winter. snow on the ground. Snow on the ground. Was big snowstorm. It big just came snowstorm. in. Yep. Big okay. snowstorm. It just came in, and and if my understanding and from looking at Google Maps, because I looked it up, there or Google Earth, I should say, Google Earth, there was a uh, there's a decent distance between behind this individual's house in a woods. And so the guy goes to let the dogs out. Dogs would always run out, run around the yard, take a whiz, do dog stuff. Mm -hmm. Dogs come out on the back porch, and they instantly are scared. They won't go out in the yard. They won't go to the bathroom. Now, they've been locked up all day, so they should have had to, you know, had the urge to do their business. Absolutely. They would not. Then this person says that he hears his dad's voice calling to him, calling his name, which was very strange 
because the whole reason why he's over there to let the dogs out is because his parents are out of town. He looks behind him back by the woods, and standing back by the woods is this tall thing that was the the genesis of the voice calling out to him. And then it moves through the snow gracefully. And we're talking huge snow drifts, two, three feet tall. No human could have yeah. just flowed through it. We would have had to stomp. You know, you're picking your feet up. Because I, I remember the snowstorm was, yeah. was eight or nine inches. Oh, yeah, had. it was a bad yeah. snowstorm. And it just kind of just glides into the woods. And he gets freaked out. And knew it wasn't human, didn't know what it was, was was freaked out that it, that it used his dad's voice. He had no idea what it was, contacted us. We started doing a little bit of research. And what did we come up with? Wendigo. And that's the other thing that we learned about the Wendigos is, is that they, the legend has it, they can mimic voices of people you know. To draw and you out there. To draw you out. So, you know, well, you're out in the woods. And here's, here's what shocked me, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is the level of ignorance mm-hmm. that I think we all have about certain things. Is mm-hmm. I, I don't associate the Wendigo legend here in Ohio. Right. You think about it out in the plains, right. out in, right. you know. Well, you think First Nations. Yeah. yeah. And you, don't really, you don't really, like, think... That's happening here in Gallion, right. and yeah, despite the fact that we've have a well, long storied history of Native Americans right. here in well, you know. so then what I did is I went back and I looked at the path of that storm and yep. where it would have came through, and it would have came through all those areas where all that Wendigo lore comes from, and then you start reading it's like they blow in with storms, they mm-hmm. travel with storms. And it started to like you know it was pretty freaky like it it was it was pretty freaky because at first we kind of thought dog man yeah we think a dog man but then it's like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute I've never heard a dog man use anybody's name yeah yeah, one one knew knew this guy's name and could mimic his dad's voice how would he know how would this thing know and that's the other part of the equation with the Wendigo is that it can get into your mind and read your thoughts. Mm And those and has this supernatural component to it. So there you have yet another version almost of the Wendigo is that it is a physical creature with supernatural powers to to know things about you, some sort of telekinetic power. Did he really hear the voice or did he hear the voice in his head? You know what I'm saying? Like, did it did it really shout? Or well, did he- I, I think about it, it's it's kind of like the whole people hearing Bigfoot in their head. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because from him being inside during the storm, the storm was you know still nasty out. Mm-hmm. The things in the wood, you know, at the edge of the mm-hmm. woods. How loud would something have to say his dad's name? It's not like right. it's a yeah. cool summer evening. Yeah. That's you know, true. and somebody's in the back going, "Hey." Yeah. It would have to be Jason. over the, all the noise of the wind and yeah. everything so else. To- so you almost got to think that it was something inside in his head calling calling to him. but we do know so, one thing which is evident by the uh the way that the animals acted is that there was definitely something that was not natural they sensed a predator yes they, they, sensed, sensed, a, they sensed a predator just you know just like people describe like with dog man that their animals freak around the, the the lady that had uh, who lived out on quaintance road and for the so it's really creepy okay is that now there is a walking path over in Galleon that travels near this area along the river yeah. that I've gone and walked. You know, Christy, yeah. Christy and I have gone and walked. Yeah. And even knowing this story, I've walked it and I've been like, man, because it kind of goes, yeah. even though you're right there at the edge of town. Yeah. You're still kind of you're like whoa this is this is like being in the woods and you're right in town it it's, is it's a it is. it's an interesting place it's an interesting place so 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 we had that experience and you know that caused us to do some research although we never you know had anything on the show about it and and uh, and then it's been now a couple weeks um, 
me and someone, and they, they didn't want their name used on the show. It's been a couple of weeks since the story that you're right. going to now tell. Yeah, so it's been Not, a couple weeks. Yeah. Right, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we, so we had this experience of a mutual mm-hmm. friend of all of ours that we all know and, mm-hmm. and, and believe, know, right. solid yep. person. Yep. And they didn't know what they saw. We, we're the ones that come up with it, with, that it's a Wendigo. Not that we know what we're Not talking Not that we know about. for sure. Not that we know what we're but, talking But about. just it fits. Mm-hmm. So then would be been a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe longer than that now, I'm out, evening walk, it's dark, mm-hmm. and with a, with a friend of mine, and we walk down to the end of this subdivision that, that runs into a field, mm-hmm. and there's some pine trees and stuff, and I knew that there had been some deer that had been laying down there because there's some mulberry trees back there. Or, and I thought, uh, oh, I wonder if those deers are laying back there. Okay, I wonder if the deers are laying back there. So I have my I have my flashlight, and I shine back there, and I see these two eyes glowing red. And it struck me as like, wait a minute, that's not how light reflects off an animal's eyes. And I take that, I, I take that, I, I totally take it back. It was reflecting blue light. It was blue light. Yes. The eyes were blue, like like almost like a like like fiery blue. Like it was really weird. And I know that's not how animals' eyes reflect. That is. And the other thing that struck me as really odd was the eyes were so close together. You know, a deer's where the way a deer's eye sit on its head. This sat like a human head. Where the eyes were close together, like a predator, right? Because obviously, and predators' at, eyes are in the front, yeah, and, in the and, front, not off to the side, right? Where because you know, like a deer can lean down to drink water or eat grass or whatever it is, and it can see, see you know, peripheral. Around, yes, you yes. know, predators see because of di- you know, this dimensionally with the space and stuff, right? So, I stood there and I thought, what in the heck is that? And then I see. It start, and I realized it was crouched down, and now it starts to stand up to its full height, and it looks huge, like it looks huge. And the person with me says, "That thing looks like the size of a horse." Now, we could see its outline, but it was far enough back we couldn't; re- the light couldn't get it, all of its features. And I look, and I'm like, "This thing is huge." And it's standing behind this pine tree that at the time I, I didn't I didn't really remember how big the pine tree was. But there's a gap in the pine tree. I went down the next day and looked at it, or a couple of days. And it was standing behind the pine tree with its face looking through where that hole was. And I could see, and the person with me agreed with me, antlers antlers and and i'm thinking could that be some giant buck deer and then someone tells me i really like this story they said well it couldn't be because deers don't have antlers right now they don't i go wait even the bucks don't have it they go no they fall off because they don't have because there's no because there's no deer that has antlers like that and besides a deer is not going to keep standing there yeah so, okay. so, I mean. so, and here's the thing. So I'm like, so at the time I'm like, I'm like watching this thing and, and it, it, it's gotta be, I'm thinking it's gotta be seven feet tall. It's, it's that big. And, and so I get my phone out and I try to take a picture of it. Of which you sent. To which me. I sent to, to Grover. The eyes of it are so close together on its head that when you look at the picture, it looks like one light and looks it's like glowing it. red. Yeah. Yeah. There's I got this. I got the picture. This picture. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'll put it up on, I'll yeah. put it up on as long as you're okay yeah. with it. I'll I put mean, it up. Ahead, on. Put it up. I mean, I'm sitting there in the chair watching probably a scary show. Cause it was late. It was probably yeah. like 11. It was after oh, 11. Yeah. Oh or yeah. Something. It was late. And I get this text and my phone goes off and it's him. And he's like, this picture and it's this red, looks like one eye. It looks like one eye, but it, it was, is. But it's from a distance to oh, where 
Here's what struck me is, is, is that I know the, where he was at, and mm-hmm. I know the, is, is where the distance that this thing is from the phone that you're taking the picture, okay? I can't believe that if there's a flash on your phone, it's, you know, sometimes you might get red eye or whatever. Right, right. There's no way. I, I can't, I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. It may have, maybe mm-hmm. it happened, but, but I get this picture and it's like this red eye or it's this red light, which then all of a sudden made me think of our experience at the campground where Amy Boo and I saw I, the red. I, and by the way, I stepped it off. How so, far was it? 130 feet. Okay. So there's, okay. I'm not an expert on photography yeah. with, I find it extremely hard to believe that, uh, Light from a, if you did have a light, because it didn't even look like you had a flash on. No, because it was just dark. So you took this no. picture, and there's this red light, and you dude, and, there's no flash on. Yeah, and so it's, he's like, I think we just saw a Wendigo, and I'm like, well, this. And then when I talked to you, I'm like, well, all I saw was one light, and you're like, that's how it showed up. That's how it showed up. But it was, and the weird thing is, in in person, the eyes were blue. And in the picture, it, it looks like one solid red mass. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. Now, to finish the story, I immediately looked at the person I was with, and they said, like, you know, like, you know, Jinx buy me a Coke thing, says, we both looked at you and says, we need to run. Like, it was like, we knew we need to run. And so we take off. And I just kept getting this feeling. I need to look back. I need to look back. And I probably got, I don't know. I I, I can't. I'm not going to guess. A decent far away, and I look back, and it had walked up to the edge of that lot, and it was standing there looking down the road at us. And the person I was with, I said, do you see that? And they said, yes, it's looking at us. And wow. I said, And I said, we need to run faster. We need to run faster, and we need to run now. And so, you know, I got bad knees, so my ability to run is really limited. And so we we booked it, got back to my house, locked the doors, closed the windows. I mean, the whole thing, and just waited to see if this thing was ever going to show up. And, and, you know, it didn't. So then a couple days goes by, because I was a little fearful to go back down there. I went back down in the daylight, and I measured from where the opening was where its face was, eight and a half feet. Did you, you see any tracks? No. You actually sent it to me and you. Oh. <laughs> and you didn't see it. No, I didn't. Which which medium did you use when you sent that? Text message. Text? Okay. Let me see it. Yeah. So, so there's, there's, there's the light. Yeah. I that's zoomed it. in. Yeah. That's, that's it right there. Wow. And by the way, there's absolutely no lights behind that. The, behind that is a row of pine trees that is thick. You can't even see through. And behind that is, is field. field. There's yeah. nothing there. And if you look, you can see that light is right where that tree was. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty dark, but it's still like, what is that? Yeah. I mean, it, it, and that's that light was too glowing eyes about and, and w- went back measured it eight and a half feet up tall so it's not a deer because deer don't have antlers this time so, of year. and deers aren't that tall okay so when so we discussed this and we're you know it's like because wh- again you still don't think what's a wendigo doing in our yeah what's a wendigo now there had been a thunderstorm shortly before that and I started thinking, okay, could this thing have blown in? I got blown in with a storm. I got something else for you. All right. So remember when we had Stan Courtney? Yes. And do you remember the experiment that you did not far away from? Oh there yeah, with yeah. Playing the sounds. I was playing the sounds yeah, of right. what we, we thought was a Bigfoot. Yeah. And you got a response. Yeah. What if that wasn't a Bigfoot? That's a good point. We don't. Now, now here's yeah. the weird. Now, now this is going to be the weird thing I'm going to tell you. What if you called this thing in? Maybe. Now, listen, this is, this is, and I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. This is the weird thing. 
So I'll go out at night and I'll walk down to the park and I'll walk, I'll walk around it and back to my house and it's round trip. It's two miles, but you've got to go through some pretty dark spots and Mm -hmm. and woods and trees that night. I started down that walking path and I stopped and I said to the person with me, I said, I don't feel good about going down there tonight. And I've been down there at night tons of times. And, and they said, well, why? I said, I just don't have a good feeling. I don't, I don't like, there was something, there was something that told me just don't go down there. Don't go down there. And and so I looked at them. I said, well, why don't we just walk around my neighborhood tonight? And they're like, well, okay, let's, that's fine. We'll just, you know, try to still get two miles in. And so that was the reason why I ended up even walking it. So my question is, Ooh. did that thing, was that thing down there and then followed me looped around? Cause it could have just got into the field and ended up looping back around where that was. Like it could have been sick because that is where I played those sounds. Hmm. That's oh, really? And that's you know, the thing, thing is, and, and, you know, I, I'm, you know, and I've said this a hundred times on the show. I didn't tell my dog man story for 30 some years out of fear of being ridiculed. And I was very reluctant. I told yeah, Grover, yeah. I, I said, I don't know right. that I want to go and tell We've the story. Mentioned, we mentioned it a couple, like, yeah. Like and and I said, and one of the reasons why I says, listen, I don't want to be one of those guys who claim that they see a Bigfoot every time they go in the woods or they've had a Bigfoot, a dog man, a Frankenstein and a mummy experience. Because you start to question those people's veracity and truthfulness when they've, when you say, well, look, you know, some guy's been in the woods ever since he was five years old and now he's 60 years old. He's never seen, heard or anything. But yet this other guy goes in the woods. Oh yeah, I've had seven big folks. And I didn't want to be one of those guys who says, oh yeah, he's just making this story up to try to pump up a podcast or this or this or that. What's the odds that he saw a dog man and he saw a Wendigo? The, those numbers are so astronomically small. He's well, clearly mind. We, you don't know that we I don't saw know a Wendigo. That, no, I'm not saying that was a Wendigo, yeah. but that that kind of when you when you look at the traditional caricature yep. of what a Wendigo is supposed to look like, that's what it looked like. And the weird thing is, the person I was with, I did not tell them, "Hey, I think that looks like a Wendigo." I did not say that. <laughs> I thought that. And then when we got closer to my house, they looked at me and said, was that a Wendigo? And I literally about crap because I said, that's exactly like we. The person that you were with told me and Christy this story just a week ago. Okay. We, we ran into them and we're kind of, you know, and told, same. The, sa- told the same story. Okay. And I did not told, know that they told you that story. Yeah. Told, yeah. The, told the same story. And, um. I mean, you just look. There was something that I don't know what it was, saw. but but we yeah. both saw. And the, the interesting thing is, is that, like I said, I I saw the exact same thing that the other person saw. We both described it exactly a hundred percent the same, and we both, without telling each other, that was our first mm-hmm. thought of what we saw, and. What what it was, I don't know, but I can tell you it wasn't a deer. I can tell you it wasn't a horse. Yeah. We now, don't have bears. Now, to be fair, not very far from there, there are horses. Okay? There are horses that could. Okay, come. I I have a horse. We have horses. I've never we've never taken horses don't act that way. No, it, it, okay. it, yeah, it, it, and horses don't, and you would have known it was a horse. You'd have heard it. You'd have heard yeah. the horse. Would and, have... and and it and like I said, it when when we took off running on on a horse is not going to come out to the edge of the property. It walked out to the edge, and when it walked out to the edge, it didn't look like it, it was not on all fours. It was something standing on two legs, and and they saw it, and I saw it, and. When we said horse, that's what they were thinking when they saw it back by that tree of how big it was. It just was how yeah. big it was. And then uh, now it was not all gaunt. Like I, I can't, I can't say. Be, all I know is it, it had to have been where the eyes were was eight to eight and a half feet tall. Well, listen, dude, that picture you sent us 
that thing if is that's 130 feet away. 130 feet away. That's that's an impressive set of eyes. light source. It is from 130 eyes. feet away. Be able like to be I seen can, like that. I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we need to go back out there. Yeah, at some night. Yep. Send Jason back towards the pine trees mm-hmm. and just. I bet we could take a hundred pictures. You'll and never we're not get go- that. We're not going to get his eyes. Right. Even if we put a flash on, we're not going to get his eyes. Right. And now the interesting thing is I have, I went back down there. Oh, week ago Mm -hmm. in my car. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I flashed the lights and there was a deer sleeping back there. And I said, okay, let's turn the lights off, turn the lights off. Got the flash. I tried to redo that thing. No, this, it's the deer's eyes and did not do anything like that. Well, and a deer's Nothing not like a that. deer's not going to stand there. Like, yeah, it's not going to stand it, and and stare me back. Here, here, and by the way, never blinked. Those those eyes that that like it never blinked. That was one of the things that I was sitting there because I'm I'm sitting there looking at. It, I'm like, those eyes are not blinking. They're just a constant. And then I was like, well, is that like? porch lights off somebody and then i realized there's nothing behind that there's nothing that could be admitting a light source not like that no, no, it was and completely then, and then, dark in that no, photo and then you realize that that is right there at that tree it's it because the the the, the, the it's an empty lot and there's pine trees that go all around it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but back the, towards, the pine trees separate that lot from the house beside it correct yeah. right and they're dense you can't see through them yeah. And the thing about it was, there's a the, the pine tree that for some reason there's a pine tree that's three quarters of the way back, that just sits in the middle of the lot, and that's where this thing was. So you can tell if you look at that picture, it's in front of the back pine trees, mm-hmm. and it's right there where that one lonely pine tree is sitting, and you can see it. I mean, we could see it perfectly that that's where it was, that it was behind. That pine tree, but not totally behind it because there's an opening in that pine tree. And that's what it was like. It was when we saw it, the eyes were down near the ground. Like it could have been like a dog, a weird big dog. But and then mm-hmm. it just stood up. And when it stood up, we now know because we went down and measured it, eight and a half feet tall. Yeah. I mean, that just blows me away. And that's not a horse either. No, that's not. It's not a horse, horse. Unless it's a Clydesdale. Wasn't and I don't know anybody around that's got Clydesdales. No, it, it wasn't. And and so, but the weird thing was, the only reason I even went that way was because when I started off, forward. I got, like I said, got on the walking path, crossed Southern, got mm-hmm. on the walking path, started walking down there, and man, something just like, you know, we talk about my spider senses. Something says, don't go down there. Don't go down there. And and I go down there at, at, at night. And keep I, in mind, that walking path is right next to the biggest cemetery. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, but so somebody, <laughs> somebody's back there saying, now why if he had that dog man experience, would he be going, well, because it's a park. Yeah. It's a park. And there's Thought always people. And there's people down there. I don't care right. what time of night it is. There's mm-hmm. people driving around down there. It's a bike path. I mean, you feel safe. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like this is some place where, you know, some mythological creature is going to be hanging out waiting to ambush you. It just do- now it's dark, but you don't get the sensation yeah. of being fearful. But that night, something told me don't go down there, turn around. And so I end up going the opposite way and, and, and run into whatever this thing is. So, look, I, I mean, if people want to call, you know, BS, they can call BS if they want, but I know what I saw. And, and the thing is, you talked to the person who was with me, and I didn't even know you talked to them, and they told you the exact same story. Here's what I'd like to see for our listeners. If we could uh, take a picture of that place during the daytime and then put mm-hmm. that up on our site along with this picture, with this thing. Yeah, we could go do thing, that. And yeah. then that way they can see the comparison of the well, area. Well, we can, do, we can go, to, we can go to, to uh, Google Earth and take a screenshot so you have the overview so you yeah. can see – Everywhere around. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, let's do that yes. when we when this episode goes yeah. up. Yeah, we'll, you'll see this. We'll it's just, there's mm-hmm. nothing there. I mean, there's there's just nothing there. That it could well, be. here's here's the thing is 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 you know I, I know you feel reluctant because it's like well I had you know, yeah. but look we every guest we have on here 
if you, it seems like if you are open to the paranormal, but you know, if you're seeing ghosts, mm-hmm. you are. Oh, it's just like you're a little bit more open, whether you mm-hmm. want to be or not, right. to experiencing whatever it is we're experiencing, whatever mm-hmm. paranormal, mm-hmm. you know, because ghosts, Wendigos, Bigfoot, they could all be working on the one plane of existence that that you know we're butting up against. That right, you know, mm-hmm. we can't. We're not, not everybody seeing, but somebody. That well, can, and, so, can, and for all you people out there, we have some, we have some fairy folk fans out there. This Friday's Midsummer's Night's Eve, mm-hmm. and I've got some weird experiences. Well, not this Friday. The- not this Friday. This Friday. From when we're doing this. Oh, gosh, you're right. Ah. It'll already have been it passed. It already passed. It's already passed. So but if yeah. you're listening to this and you experienced so anything on Friday, June 25th, is it? I don't know. 25th is a Friday. Yeah, yeah it's, for, it's June 25th. That mm-hmm. is Friday. It's, it's the summer. So it's the, this will be the out a couple weeks after. It'll be out after the <laughs> week. But I'll tell you, there's for, for those of you who are fae people and fairy things, Reach out to us on From the Shadows podcast. I got some pretty interesting stories they want to hear. I don't want you. Obviously, we're not going to get into it now, but I'll tell you it. The, and and the whole Midsummer's Night's Eve stuff, where the for those of you who are listening, never heard of this. Uh, Europeans especially believe that the summer solstice, that the veil between this world and the fairy world, or whatever dimension that is, it's at its thinnest. Is at its thinnest. So are know? we going out Friday night to that lot? Oh, I'm going. No, I'm not going to that lot. There's a place I go every year because uh, I've had some really odd experiences, and um, I I go there every year because and every year I'm out there. And the thing is, it's I'll give it away because everybody will have missed it. Malabar State Farm, Lucas, Ohio, mm-hmm. and by the way, there's some there's some haunting history with that too. But this is a very strange scenario, and and um, if you are out, and, and the, the folklore goes that right as the sun's setting, that is when the veil is at its most thinnest, and you can peer into that dimension that do you have the ability so i've got some really interesting experiences so how how is it for somebody that seemingly already peers into the uh, into another dimension from time to time how heightened is it <laughs> to be out there see that's why i just I'll be in the lazy. I'll be in the. No, I'll be at home. Well, I don't. I don't feel that, that there's nothing that there's nothing that 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 appears to be menacing about it. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Did, and I know what did had, Kaiser so say? Yeah. Well, but you know, we we did have we did have the the Icelandic uh, the mm-hmm. lady on, and and you talk about well, you know the the myths of, of fairies and, and gnomes and and creatures like that. They can be mischievous. They can be benevolent. They can be malevolent. They could don't screw with them. I'm glad but, you could say that word yeah, since we had trouble. We had trouble. <laughs> but, you know, the interesting thing about that is that um, Midsummer's Night's Eve is that there's all kinds of stories out there. There's all kinds of stories. And the weird thing for me was I was out on Midsummer's Night's Eve on a trail and did not even realize it was Midsummer's Night's Eve. I, I, didn't, even, I mean, didn't think anything about it. And I was out there, and I'm walking down this path, and all of a sudden, and it was late, it was getting late, and I'm, I'm walking down this path, and I get overwhelmed with the smell of flowers. Just, like, overwhelmed. It was just, it was it was like someone had just sprayed, sprayed it in it. my yeah. face. Like, you know, like somebody has a room, like an air freshener of, like, lilacs. And they just sprayed it in my face. Like, it was overpowering. And I looked around, I was like, man, them flowers smell good. There's no flowers around. I mean, there, there's no, there's none. Like, this is just scraggly stuff. And I look and look I'm like, there is nothing. And and I'm telling you, it was so overpowerful that it was almost intoxicating. It was so strong. And, and the weird thing is when I smelled it, I just felt so good. Like it just felt so comfort. <laughs> this is weird. And not like high, like, Hey, I got high. So it was groovy. just a very, groovy. no, it wasn't groovy. <laughs> it was just very, it had a very calming feeling to it. Like a very, like, 
relaxing feeling to it. Like, this just feels, you know. So I just felt it was really weird. And so I, I, I left, and I didn't think too much about it. And, and I was like, man, that was just really weird. So I did a little bit of research. And lo and behold, guess what? It was Midsummer's Night's Eve. And I read that, and people were saying, this guy's nuts. Why is he telling these stories? But <laughs> I read where Faye, I'm going to say Faye, the Faye to get your attention will hit you with this flower sense to make you self to look around. I was like, are you kidding me? Is that, I mean, could that honestly. So they're trying to get you to look around at. And you them? I don't know. And I didn't really. I just looked for flowers. I was like, really weird. And so, but then I kept reading. I kept doing more research because now it's, you know, I'm a researcher as a history major. And they, and what I found was that if the Fae believe that you are someone that is open to them, that they can tell, they will try to communicate with you. Oh. Now, there's all kinds of, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of years of history of this stuff of people telling these stories. So I was like, man, did, is there something about me that, is there something about me that, that, that is tuned? And so, in, you know. Well, I think there is. But it's in my obvious. employment, but it's the obvious. weird thing is, in my employment, we won't go down that route, but in my employment, I had this guy come in front of me and he says, oh my gosh, man. He goes, oh my gosh. He goes, you have the most amazing aura around you. I'm like, what are you talking about? I think this guy's high as a kite, like he's on LSD. He goes, no, no. He goes, I see in colors, and I, and you have this amazing gold glow around you. He goes, it's just, he goes, I see it around people, but yours is just so overpowering. I just, I just can't, you can't understand it. So I totally dismiss this guy because I just think, look, there's something wrong. He's in mental health or he's all messed up. F- fast forward a couple years, maybe, a couple years, down in Columbus, Okay, I'm walking along the storefront, and this woman stops me. And she says, I just want to tell you something. I'm like, okay. I guess my fly down. or Are you Kevin Costner? Yeah, that one too. And she goes, you have the most amazing aura around you. I go, let me guess. It's gold. And she goes, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, is there oh. something? And I'm sitting there thinking, is there something to this? Is this real? Yeah, you know I mean, so I looked it up. Was and there there's Ashton Kutcher jumping out saying, "Ah, well, yeah, you got uh, but, but yeah. you, you probably have a vibrational difference that makes you susceptible." But the things that you've experienced, you know, other people probably have ah, tried so to I looked it up. But things, I've looked but it up. They don't have the susceptibility to it. So I mean, anyway, so well, let we've me had a lot, well, we've had a lot of guests yeah. that yeah. have multiple experiences in right. different right. paranormal activities. Right. Right. So I just I, so I just, so yeah. let me finish this story then. So. So I was like, well, this is just like real. So I looked up this whole aura stuff and yeah, people, there are people out there that see people emit different colors mm-hmm. and whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, so then for some reason, after I started doing this Fay research, I don't know why, but I get, I just had this overwhelming desire to go to Iceland and I don't know why I'd never thought of going to Iceland before, but I just had this, man, I want to go to Iceland. I don't want to. So I started, I started going on orbits and, you know, uh, and, and all these things, XP and look, trying to look at trips. But at the same time, I started thinking about going to Machu Picchu and hiking the Inca trail. Like these were like two, I was like, man, these are two bucket list things I want to do. So I'm like, I'm pricing out these trips and doing all this stuff. And I'm just like, at what point did I, ever, and first of all, I am horribly scared of heights. You can't get me on a roller coaster. Or nothing, and I'm reading this stuff about man to hike the Incan Trail. How far you got to go up in the mountains? And they and there's a big warning that says if you're scared of heights, this probably isn't the right thing for you to do. But I'm like, no, nah, I want to do it. I really want to do it. And I literally almost you know booked a trip, you know, and I'm and and then I start reading that because I keep reading, I find that there are certain locations in the world where. People have theorized that they're the dimensional gateways mm-hmm. to these other dimensions. One is in Iceland, one is at Machu Picchu. And so then I started thinking, are these things subliminally calling, calling me, messaging me, wanting me to go to these places? You know what I mean? And I'm like, this is just so screwy weird. So I said, okay, next year, Midsummer's Night's Eve, I'm going back. 
I'm going to see what happens. Let's see if somebody calls you. So I go back. So I go back, get to the exact same spot. I don't, you know, I don't smell any flowers or anything. So I'm thinking, well, this is just, you know, complete coincidence, just 100% coincidence. So I start going down this trail. It's pretty steep. And you get down to close to the bottom. And it's starting to get dark. And I'm like, I don't really want to be out here when it gets dark, dark. And I look and I see this light, this little red light. And it's back in kind of the woods. And it's floating and bouncing and moving. And not just like in one direction. It moves. And it was just this little, little tiny light. And I th- and, and it wasn't like somebody had a laser pointer. It not, it's not that at all. And I watched this thing as it bounces, and it just moves gracefully in and out of the trees and up and down. And it, just, it was just weird. So And then it just goes away, and I get to the bottom, and I see, and you'd have to get through some really gnarly terrain. Mm-hmm. But sitting up at about eh, six feet in the air, is a perfect sphere, perfect sphere, not a, a sphere. Like you could tell it was a perfect sphere. And inside the sphere, it looked like a television set when we were kids, when the national anthem was done playing at night and they like turned on the, the, the fuzzy, like saw the white the noise. Sca- yeah. Like, like that. Yeah. And now this is probably 25 feet off trail, maybe close to that, maybe 20 feet. Cause, cause I remember sitting there thinking I could shoot a three point shot from here and it was a perfect sphere. And I was like, man, I want to, I want to go over there and put my hand right through that and see what happens. You know what I mean? Like, and the person I was with grabs me and says, don't do it. Don't do it. I said, do not do it. Well, one, it would have been, <laughs> it'd have been difficult to get to it because you'd have had to really get through some stuff. But the person says, don't do it. You don't know what that is. Don't do it. And, and, then, and then they're like, and then so I'm like, eh, okay, I'm not going to do it. So then we're driving back, and they said, look, you understand if any of this stuff's real, if it's real. And they weren't really a big believer. I said, if this is real, that could have been a portal. And what happens if you get sucked into it? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I don't know. I and become king of the- <laughs> I become king of the hills. No, I think you come from this plane of existence and over there you're not going to be nobody else's king <laughs> well, well you know what know. It kinda, the bottom well, of you the know what pole. you know what as i was driving yeah. you know what movie i thought of what you, you're not going to guess beetlejuice no or the sandworm oh. no phantasm oh, remember okay. the old movie phantasm oh, yeah. where yeah, they took them. those people and they took them into the other dimension they made them slaves and the, the tall man, and they were like, they looked like little jowls, and they made people well, listen, if And I'm like, knows, oh, my God. If any of these people have been watching you, they know your adversity to manual labor, and you'd be the last person. They would <laughs> but anyway, it. so so, <laughs> so I'm saying is, so, and so that's been, hmm, that's been two, three years ago. So every year on Midsummer's Night's Eve, I go back to the same place, and I usually, usually there's some odd thing that happens can't explain it i'm not going to sit here and, and profess that i'm communicating with the fae i'm not going to do that i'm not going out on a limb I, I i believe what i see mm-hmm. and i know what i saw when i was a teenager and i know what i saw a couple weeks ago i, I never have these experiences but but you did you you i mean you had a ghost experience yeah, where something ghost touched experience. you and yeah oh absolutely tried to usher you out of that seat you had to go all the way to kentucky for that to happen and then but, I found out the people that had had experiences before said that was one of the most powerful experiences that they've ever went through. But but I think the moral of the story the moral of the story is these things we're talking about whether it's Wendigo, the Fae, or ghosts, or Sasquatch, or Dogman, or whatever, mm-hmm. these things have been around in folklore for hundreds and even thousands of years, mm-hmm. and there's been thousands upon thousands of sightings. Yep. Of whether it's a dogman or Sasquatch, or, or you know, especially Europeans with Faye. I mean, we had the people on with the evil gnome that was just oh, a really that crazy was really story. Creepy there, and so we can't sit back and just dismiss that what someone saw was coincidence or they mistook something. Maybe they did, and maybe maybe you know, maybe what I saw wasn't what I thought it was, and 
and maybe this the the phase all made up and does you, this. Now, you saw tell somebody, something though. I saw something and and I know yeah. on Midsummer's Night's Eve I've experienced some weird things that I never experienced and I've been on those hiking trails many 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 times and never have experienced anything like that except on Midsummer's Night's Eve well I I think the you know when it comes to the like the Native American stuff mm-hmm I think we're so easily dismissive of what, how could they know anything? Because, well, they didn't have a cell phone in their hand that they could Google something and find anything out. How right. do, how do, but, but those people were so much more in tune mm-hmm. with the right. earth, with earth and the this, nature, their surrounding okay. environment. So, yeah. so I guess, so I guess we really haven't solved anything except to say that we, we don't know what's, What's out there? Well, no, you, right. You know, we're not discounting what is out yeah, there. Yeah, we're, we're not going to dismiss so, and, and we it. We don't. Like we most don't profess, people. at least from our standpoint. And, and I know there's books written about the Wendigo. We we haven't had time to, to sit down and order and read. So if if somebody out there has more knowledge than us, I'm sure they do. Well, there's a lot of people that have more. Yeah, knowledge. but but I want to hear, especially since we're based in the Midwest, mm-hmm. right? Any of our listeners. Right. Have a story. That's have a somewhere. good when to go story or something they believe might be after, especially after hearing these right. stories. Yeah. Contact us at what's the email address? From the shadows podcast at Gmail. At Gmail. Hit us up on our social media from the shadows podcast on Instagram. After the shadows on Facebook. Find us, send, you know, send us, a, send us your experience. Yeah. And let's, uh, and, and if you have, if you, had an experience on this last Midsummer's Night's Eve. Eve. Let us know, or ever had a Midsummer's Night's yeah. Eve. Re- re- reach out to us. We're, we're uh, you know, we 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 pride ourselves on being non-judgmental about experiences and creating a form by which people can come on and tell their stories. Absolutely. And you know what? Not every eyewitness sighting is what they think it is. No, it's not. But. We 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 look at whatever we look what people see and what they think they saw, and then you know we let you the listener you know be the judge on whether or not you think what they saw is what they saw. And if there's somebody out there that has a rational explanation for what me and a friend of mine saw that we both deduced as a possible wind to go, if you you know if there's something you got an idea, we'd love to hear it. Yep. If it was a natural occurrence, I'm all ears. Um, but like I said, I did. I was very reluctant because I didn't want to be one of those guys that always claimed that he had experiences. Because you just, it, I guess, I still hold, I still hold that fear, even the being, you know, not believed. You know I mean, mm-hmm. I think we, yeah. I think human nature is that we all have this innate, innate feeling of being a. F- scared of, of being made fun of or not believed and, and things like that. So and we have, and we've had so many guests here recently. Oh, they've said the same thing. Said the same thing. Well, you know, the way I feel about that, I mean, uh, people, they just want to dismiss, dismiss what they don't understand. And, uh, this is a place that we can learn from each other. And, uh, if we can keep keeping people to tell us what they've experienced, well, then eventually we will get some answers. I don't know. I don't want an answer to an eight foot thing. I do with antlers. So go out. Well, I'll give you the address. Go out there and. Spend but you know, the thing I'll, is, I'm going to have to do that. Check it out. But I don't know that. But if you know, but if if these, but it sounds to me like some of the stuff that I read, these things are transient. They blow in with storms and they're moving constantly. And you think about it, if what they're saying is true, is they 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 have these in you know insatiable appetites that they're always looking to eat and stuff. They would basically have to be constantly moving, looking for victims, whether it's animals or people or, or mm-hmm. what have you. And that goes back to the David Pilates, you know, missing 411. Story. All right, we're not going down that we're going road. down. We've been talking. People just disappear. We've been, hey, we've been on here long enough. All right. So, yeah. so if every, anybody has an exp, has had an experience out there, you think so, like, we're re, we want to hear a Wendigo experience. Want to hear a Wendigo. Or a skinwalker. Or a skinwalker. I don't, skinwalker. Even, I don't want to talk about skinwalker. Well, if you're Navajo, they won't talk about it. Okay. So because you're inviting it in. <laughs> so we hope you we hope you enjoyed this discussion. We uh, we hope we get you out there to do some research. And once again, if you've had any experiences, get a hold of us. Yep, contact us if you forget um, our social medias and all that. Just go to from the shadows podcast dot com. Everything's listed there with links to get to them. So uh, 
Check us out, and uh, Jason hope you've Lewis, enjoyed everything. Super producer, Facebook fans only fans page will be up shortly. <laughs> yeah, as well right. as the Ozark, I think we have a we have a some people want to do an Ozark Howler fan page, so we're just waiting. Right. waiting. Hop to it. Nobody, how come nobody wants to do a Shane Grove fan page? All right. Anyway, cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks right. for hanging out with us. All right. Yep. Take, Take care, care, everyone. Yep. See you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha 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 ha.